This presentation will explain how to enter the dimensional data into the MPS566 GNSS receiver to ensure precise navigation from a closely coupled GNSS and inertial navigation system. Read the MPS566 pilot installation guide to learn more. I will explain the measure up of the relative position of the two GNSS antenna on the compass deck and the dimensions from the position antenna to the MPS-566, which is located in the wheelhouse. This picture shows the GNSS antennas on the compass deck. The one close by is on the port side and is what we call the position antenna. The antenna over on the starboard side is the heading antenna. If you can't place the antennas exactly port and starboard, then place them parallel to the center line of the vessel in a bow to stern direction parallel to the vessel center line. In today's example, the GNSS position antenna is on the port side and the GNSS heading antenna is on the starboard side, so they create a baseline exactly at right angles to the vessel center line. We use a tape measure and measure between them in a positive Y direction and we note that they're at the same height on the vessel. While up on the compass deck measure from the position antenna to the MPS-566 in the wheelhouse, Measure in the port starboard axis positive, Y axis going to starboard. Measure in the forward aft axis positive, X axis going forward. Measure in the up down axis positive, Z axis going downwards. Now in the wheelhouse, you will have screwed the MPS 566 pilot system down firmly, either facing forward to the bow, which is the default as shown on the diagram on the right side, as well as the actual photo in the top left or facing stern, as shown on the left side of the diagram. In today's example, the MPS-566 is facing to the bow, which is the positive x-axis. We can now start entering data into the MPS-566 via the web browser user interface. While we were on the compass deck, we used the tape and measured 11.08 meters between the two antennas. The first task is to double-check this critical measurement between the two antennas. We can let the MPS-566 measure this vector precisely between the antennas by ensuring the INS function is off and then looking at the receiver status vector. First go to the receiver configuration INS and ensure that this is not enabled, then go to the receiver status and the vector heading display, and down at the bottom right you'll see the range between the two antennas is 11.08 meters, which confirms the taped measurement. Back in the receiver configuration, INS menu, this time we're going to enable it and go through the menus. Under general, leave the default values on and the receiver motion as marine. Under graphic prerequisites, there's no need to change anything. These values really only change the shape and size of the boat in the 3D view over on the right. They don't affect the accuracy of the GNSS data. For the mounting angles, there is no need to input the orientation of the MPS-566 in this example, since the default orientation is used. In other words, the receiver is facing forward, facing the bow. Under GNSS lever arm, leave the primary GNSS offsets as zero, so the NMEA position outputs will be of the position antenna location. The primary to secondary GNSS baseline, in other words, from the position antenna on the port side to the heading antenna on the starboard side, we will enter 11.08 meters in the y-axis, which is positive to starboard. Leave the 1 sigma precision tolerance to 1 centimeter, this is important. The IMU lever arm is from the reference point to the IMU, in other words, from bottom of the GNSS position antenna to the bullseye on top of the MPS-566. Here is a photo of the bullseye on the top of the MPS-566 which is used for taking a measurement to the IMU. In this example, the X value is the forward and aft distance. So let's say the position of the MPS-566 is 3 meters behind the position antenna. So we enter minus 3 meters and let's say the MPS-566 which is down in the wheelhouse, is starboard of the position antenna by 5.54 meters, so we enter positive 5.54 meters. 
Z is the vertical distance from the position antenna to the MPS 5666, which in this example is positive 4 meters, since down is the positive Z axis. Make sure to add 9 centimeters to the Z measurement as the antenna phase center is 9 centimeters above the base of the antenna, which was used as the measurement point. So the Z measurement in this example is now 4.09 meters. NMEA messages output the position of the antenna phase center, so that's why you have to add the 9 centimeters. You don't have to alter anything in the HE filter, so just press OK to accept all these configuration changes. It should take about 20 seconds to initialize and deliver precise heading and rate of change. You can check how it's going by going to the Receiver Status menu, INS Status page, and you'll see it's actually aligned. If it doesn't align and it stays degraded, then go back into the Receiver Configuration INS page and check the distance between the two antennas. Here it's 11.08 and make sure that you set the one sigma tolerance to one centimeter. The other thing we recommend is that you make use of this 3D graphics page. Here you'll see the heading antenna, the position antenna, and the MPS 566, and you can spin it around and check that they're in the right orientation. Yes, the MPS 566 is about 4 meters below the baseline of the antennas. Don't worry about the shape of this boat. It's just an indication of the vessel orientation. Having completed this configuration process, it means the system is producing precise position, rate of turn and other data, as well as heading of the vessel. When a pilot comes on board with their pilot app running on a Wi-Fi tablet, they need the dimensions of the position antenna relative to the vessel's hull. The following measurements are needed from the GNSS position antenna to the bow, to the stern, to the port side of the vessel, to the starboard side of the vessel, and the vertical distance from the position antenna to the keel of the vessel. Remember to add the 9 centimeters to allow for the offset of the antenna phase center to the base of the antenna. No further measure up is needed. The MPS 566 will use the INS configuration parameters to compute the vessel heading, which is output to the pilot application in the NMEA messages. There is no need to measure the position of the AIS antenna. There is a full installation guide for the system and for further support, contact your local Trimble Marine dealer.